What I'm going to ta talk about today, talk about today, is the Camino Real. Old San Antonio Road, Royal Road, and King's Highway. It began as game trails and then Indian trails and then evolved into a road used by the Spanish as a route from Mexico to the Spanish missions in East Texas. And then later on when the immigrants started coming in from the U.S. they traveled that same road. What we're going to particularly talk about today is the route that was marked by the DAR in 1918. W.E. Dunn, who was the Texas University archivist at the time, stated, the rediscovering and marking of the El Camino Real is the most significant work undertaken by the Daughters of the American Revolution in Texas. Our story begins when Mrs. Lipscomb Norville was attending the DAR Continental Congress, which is their national convention, in Washington, D.C. And she heard a report on the Santa Fe Trail, which stated it was the oldest trail in the United States, blazed in 1848. Now, Mrs. Norville had grown up in Bastrop, Texas, and she knew that the Texas Camino Real was much older. She spoke up at the meeting and the Camino Real was added to the National Old Trails and Roads of the DAR. She was named chairman of the Texas National Old Trails and Road Commission of the DAR and was given the task of organizing a survey of the trail and subsequent commemorative efforts. In 1911, the Texas DAR State Conference made the decision to mark the Old Trails Road, or the El Camino Real. In July of 1915, V.N. Zivley, a civil engineer, was appointed by Governor James Ferguson to locate the OSR, and Mrs. Norville was to oversee his progress, which she certainly did. In 1917, the state legislature established the State Highway Department, whose history is intertwined with the Camino Real and State Highway 21, which all of us are familiar with. The search for the route took months of study of old documents, and it was finally discovered that the Camino Real was blazed by Domingo Tehran de los Dios in 1691. The most valuable source that Mr. Zivley found was a diary of a Spanish missionary priest, Juan Augustin Morphy, who had made a trip over the road in 1778 from the mission of San Juan Bautista near Guerrero, Mexico, which also is known, it was known as the Presidio de la Rio Grande, to the missions at San Antonio de Bear. Morphy was great on giving details and vis Zivley had this to say about Morphy. I want to dot, doff my hat to Morphy as the most accurate artist that I have ever met in books. Every place he mentions, every object of entrant, interest, I found just as described by him in that brief diary. He noted hills, he noticed swamps, he noticed any kind of thing that, that could be recognized later on, and that's exactly what Zivley did. The DAR proposed to mark the route by a series of pink granite markers placed at five mile intervals with additional markers placed at each stream or river crossing. After Zivley completed his survey in 1916, he noted that 60% of the OSR was already being used as a road, and he hoped that the entire road would be opened and maintained by the state. As it turned out, it wasn't, because west of uh, Katerina, when you get in the ranch country, they simply could not afford to go in there and put roads in. For one thing, the ranchers didn't want them. The markers are there. A lot of them are still on those ranches, Although in one instance, we do know that one was moved up to the highway just so people would know about it. But those, those particular markers are very seldom seen by anybody. A contract 
was let to a Mr. A. L. Gooch for $4,300 for 123 markers. Mr. Gooch reported that 118 had been placed from the Sabine River to Katerina. Quote, but owing to the condition of the country west of Katerina, it is utterly impossible to set the five remaining markers. These would be the ones that are on those ranches. He offered to make a compromise. But according to Mrs. Norval, she said, we have refused to accept. As you well know, our mind is made up. <laughs> and the contract will not be broken. Mr. Gooch now understands that he must finish his work before he is paid the remaining $1,840. <laughs> the report of the Texas State Regent to the Continental Congress in 1918 stated, Mrs. Lipscomb Norville, State Regent Elect and Chairman of the King's Highway Committee, reports that the markers for the highway completed and very soon the 123 granite boulders will be placed five miles apart from Pendleton on the Sabine River on the east to the Rio Grande on the west. Thus, after six years of untiring effort, she had raised $10,600 and in her own language finished the marking of the trail by saying, the trail commemorates the life history of a people it is the autograph of a nation written across the face of a state, not made by chance, but built that the torch of American civilization might be carried into the wilderness. In an impressive ceremony in San Pedro Park in San Antonio, the daughters presented the historic trail to the state of Texas. Mrs. Norville presented a map showing the location of the 123 boulders which are inscribed, and you all have seen these, I'm sure, on those pink granite markers. Kings Highway, Comina Real, Old San Antonio Road, marked by the Daughters of the American Revolution and the State of Texas, A.D. 1918. In 1991, the Texas Department of Highways and Public Transportation published a book commemorating the tricentennial of the Comina Real, 1691-1991. It shows the several different Camino Reals that cross Texas. The Camino de las Tejas, the Lower Presidio Road, the Upper Presidio Road, and the Camino Arriba, the one which is marked by the DAR from Pendleton's Crossing to San Antonio. On the map over here, the little orange yarn is the Lower Presidio Road, and then it picks up with the yellow marker which goes all the way to the Sabine. To the Sabine. Following the route from the Rio Grande, it goes through Catarina, Catula, Pleasanton, San Antonio, New Braunfels, San Marcos, Bastrop, Caldwell, Norman G, Midway, Alto, Nacogdoches, San Augustine, and then on to Pendleton's Crossing on the Sabine, which is now Toledo Bend Reservoir. It was the Sabine River at that time. During the term of Florence Patton from Nacogdoches, as the DAR state regent, she decided to try and find all of the missing markers and return them to their proper locations. In 1990, we talked to Al McGraw with, the, with TexDOT and offered to make our centennial project for the DAR the replacing of the markers but he said that the state already had allocated funds for that, so for the DAR to spend their money on other projects, which we did. But the years went by, and, and nothing much was happening with the markers. We, we still knew that quite a few were missing, and some were, some were laying down and needed to be set up and, and replaced. So Ms. Patton decided that she was tired of waiting, and she was going to do it. The search began with many members hunting for markers along the route. There are ladies in this room I know who help with this. Would they raise their hands, please? Oh, I think there's more than that. <laughs> I personally have made the trip from beginning to end twice. <laughs> in Brazos County, members of William Scott Chapter of Bryan and Lafayette Chapter of College Station 
spent many hours searching. One of the markers down in South Texas was found being used for a porch step. <laughs> several had been, and the lady didn't want to give it up either. Uh, several had been moved due to road construction. A few had been, had been hit by uh, probably trucks or something like that, and, and some of them are not nearly as thick as others because some of the granite has been broken away. The one up at Midway was just laying down on the ground for a long time. Here in Brazos County, we found that at least two were missing on the stretch of OSR that goes from just this side of the Brazos River up through Norman G, through Benchley, Norman G, and then it ties back into Highway 21 at Midway. Well, we knew there were at least two that we couldn't find. We found one in the Tex Dot maintenance yard. <laughs> Well, it was safe, <laughs> along, really safe, along with the Texas State Historical Marker that had been hit by a vehicle and damaged. And somebody had crashed into them and just had, had knocked the, the big post that holds the Texas Historical Marker up, and so it was laying there. So we talked to them, and they put both of the markers back in a safe place, not where it was originally, where it got hit. But it is on the OSR, and it is visible, but it is out of traffic. Now, the DAR chapter, the Colonel George DeShield chapter, up in Norman G, discovered that one was located on the south side of OSR, close to the Navasota River. Originally, the markers were all on the north side of the road, but due to, you know, the roads being moved and things like this, some of them ended up on the, on the south side. The last marker was quite elusive and took some detective work. After driving up and down that stretch of road about five or six times, we decided we weren't going to find it visually. So when Joan Teer was regent of La Vieta chapter in College Station, she put an article in the Eagle with a picture of a marker asking for anyone who had information to please call the paper. In a few days, she got a call that someone had called saying there was a marker in her neighbor's backyard. <laughs> and thank goodness she gave us the address. Well, Joan and I went rushing out to El Camino Real Estates, and there it was. It was in the backyard, turned facing away. You couldn't see it from the road at all. And it had shrubs and iris planted around it. I mean, it was a nice little commemorative park. <laughs> well, we, f we got the name of the lady, and she actually lived in Kentucky part of the time. So Miss Patton called her in Kentucky and explained the whole thing to her and told her we would like to have the marker put back where it was. And she said, it's my marker, and you can't have it. <laughs> well, th this went on for for a while. <laughs> and when Miss Patton was here for the commemoration of the, the one who had been put back up by TxDOT, I said, would you like to ride on down OSR and take a look at the one that's in the lady's backyard? <laughs> so off we went. When we got there, there was a car there, so we assumed that maybe the lady was there in residence and we knocked on the door and this great huge man opened the door and about scared us half to death and so we explained to him why we were there and what we wanted and he says well i'm the new owner he says i bought it from the lady in kentucky and you certainly can have your marker so Tex Dot came to the rescue and they placed the marker on a nice concrete base at a pullout on the south side of the road, but it's where you can pull in and look at it and read it, and you don't have to worry about being hit by a car. It is not a traffic hazard. In 2004, there was a historic symposium in Cameron for the new El Camino Real de los Tejas with Haskell Monroe from College Station as the moderator and Kay Bailey Hutchison as a speaker and Marcy Heathman from Cameron was one of the people involved in that. Kay Bailey Hutchison was the senator who introduced the legislation creating the road as a National Historic 
trail, which it is now, and it is under the supervision of the National Park Service. In 2006, Miss Patton had been up and down from the Rio Grande of the Sabine so many times, she decided that some more members of the DAR needed to see it. So she organized a bus tour, and 40 late ladies traveled the entire route from the Rio Grande to Pendleton. And we followed the original route as close we, as we could. We could not go through some of those, some of those ranches. And so we had to, we, we explained to the people on the bus why we were having to go on a road because the, the original route was not paved or opened at all. Lisa Lee from over at Kingwood, when she was chairman of the DAR committee on the Camino Real markers, she spent hours and hours traveling the route and she has GPS locations for all of the markers, but there are still seven we can't find. But we keep looking. My poor daughter <laughs> had to get in the San Marcos River and, and it's cold, let me tell you, ladies. And she went across feeling with her feet and we were looking down into the water and we never could find the one. We did have a, a local DAR member who said that her husband at one point had seen it in the bottom of the river. But they have had two humongous floods in that river in the past few years and we think probably it just got swept swept downstream or completely covered with gravel. So we've just, we've just given up on that one. But we're still looking for the other seven we have heard that there's a man over close to Paige that has one in his living room. And I don't know why you'd want one in your living room, but uh, we don't know that because he's never let anybody in the living room to look. So anyway. But the search continues, and maybe someday we will find all the markers. What the DAR started in 1911 continues today, and we are very pleased that the trail has now been recognized at a national level. And thank you for letting me come and tell you about this because it's something that everybody in Brazos County should know about. I'm sure you all have been up and down, up and down Highway 21, and it virtually follows Highway 21 from San Antonio all the way over to, to the Sabine River. So the next time you see one, stop and wave at our markers. Thank you. <laughs>